Welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's math channel, and I'm now going to be answering question number six from the international, or well, actually not from the international A level, from the January 2006 Edexcel GCE Mechanics M1 paper. Very, very old question. The reason I'm answering it is because a student has requested me to answer it uh, from the channel. Um, so I'm going to go and answer this question. Um, there are many questions like this I think I've already answered on the channel. So, you know, if you looked at my playlist for uh, vectors and found a similar question, you might see how to answer it and then, you know, try to answer it before I do here and see if you can get it right and uh, see if you understood from what I've done before. But in any case, I'll answer it here. It says a model boat A moves on a lake with constant velocity minus I plus 6J meters per second, where I and J are unit vectors which are due east and due north at time t equals zero a is at the point with position vector 2i minus 10j meters find the speed of a now the speed of the boat is going to be the magnitude of its velocity the velocity tells you about its direction and its magnitude but the speed is purely just the magnitude so the speed is never given in vector form it's always the magnitude of that vector so if you think about it the vector i um the vector minus i plus 6j means it's like um i'll just draw it over here it means like it's one unit to the left or one unit to the to the west we could say and six units north okay so that would be the actual vector itself would be um this inside this would be the actual vector itself this is the vector okay this is the vector or the velocity of a it's one unit to the left and six units up so we want the magnitude of the vector which is basically the length of this line so the vector a or the velocity of a is given by minus one six now i like to write it in this form of column vectors when I'm dealing with vectors just makes calculations that much easier. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to write it as a column vector where the top number represents i and the bottom represents the, the j component. Um, so we want, we know the speed is going to be the magnitude of the velocity of a, which is going to be given by, if you think about Pythagoras, it's going to be the square root of 1 squared plus 6 squared. We don't care about the negative sign because it's going to be squared anyway. That's going to give you the square root of 37. 6 squared is 36. 1 squared is 1. So that's 37. And the square root of 37 must be 6 point something. So we write it to 3SF in the end. The square root of 37 is equal to 6.0827. 6.0827. We'll round to 3SF. So we can say the speed that we're looking for is equal to 6.0. It's 0.8. It's not 8. 6.0. 0.8 meters per second. Okay, so that's the answer that we're looking for. I'll just put it into that space over there. Then it says, find part B, the direction in which A is moving, giving your answer as a bearing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, whoops, I'm going to take what I've got here and just move it up a bit out of the way. All right, so what we need is the bearing okay the bearing of this vector okay the direction as a bearing so it's moving in this direction as we can see here how do we describe it well they want us to describe it as a vector as a as a as a, as a bearing okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to draw what's called the north line going straight up that's the north line bearings are always measured from the north line and always measured in the clockwise direction so i need to find what this whole angle here is between that point and that point that's what I need to write down the bearing or to find the bearing of this uh, vector. So if you think about it, this angle in here, which I'm going to call theta, the bearing is basically 360 take away this angle. Because if I carry it on all the way, it's going to be 360 degrees. So if I take away 360 from it, the bearing would be 360 minus this angle theta. And the angle theta there is the same as this angle here. This is also angle theta. If this is theta, this is theta because this is north. Remember, it's 6j. This is the north line. 
and these are alternate angles. They make like this Z shape. So these two are equal. And I can find what this theta is from this triangle. This is like the opposite. And this is like the adjacent. So I can use tangent. So I can say the tangent of theta is equal to the opposite over the adjacent, 1 over 6. So therefore, theta is equal to, so I can just use inverse tan of 1 over 6. Um, I'm in degree mode. That's correct. Inverse tan of 1 over 6. And that gives us 9.462 degrees, 9.462 degrees. So therefore, the bearing that we're looking for is 360 degrees minus 9.462 degrees. This is unrounded, that, that value for now. So I do 360, take away the angle I found, which gives you 350.537 350.537 continue on now bearing should always be given to the nearest degree let me just write that a bit neater i'm sorry about my handwriting is a bit messy there so it's 350.537 so bearing should always be given to the nearest degree so here it's going to be 351 degrees normally angles are given to one decimal place um, in angles in degrees, but bearings should always be given to the nearest degree. So here I won't put 350.5, I'll put 351 degrees. So that's the answer for A and B. They're kind of related to each other. Um, a is about the magnitude and B is about the direction as a bearing. Okay, so that's part A and B of question number six. Then it says, at time t equals zero, a second boat B is at the point with position vector minus 26 i plus 4j. Given that the velocity of B is 3i plus 4j meters per second, show that A and B will collide at a point P and find the position vector of P. So first of all, let's take the information of A. You've got the velocity of A is minus 1, 6. So I'm writing as a vector. So I'm going to look at, I'm going to get the information for A. The velocity of A is minus 1, 6. And the position vector of A when time equals 0, so I'll put RA with a little 0 there, um, that's when the time is zero is 2i minus 10j because it says at time t equals zero a is at the point with position vector 2i minus 10j so that's 2 and minus 10 okay so that's for a now for b we're told the velocity of b is given by the vector 3i plus 4j so that's 3 4 and its initial position vector when time is zero is negative 26 i and 4 j okay negative 26 i and 4 j so from this i can um write down the equation i know that the equation the position vector of a point is given by its initial position plus the velocity that it's going at times the time for which it's traveling that will tell you where its position is its position vector with respect to the origin so if this is o and say this is where it was when time equals zero, this would be r zero. And supposing it's going at a certain velocity, like in this direction, after one second, it's going to be here. This is like its velocity vector. After two seconds, it's going to be here, for example. After three seconds, it's going to be there, and so, so on. So depending on the time, okay, so depending on the time, the this will take you to its initial position. And then after one second, it will be here. So the this this vector, will be from O to that point. That's what will be, that's what R will be. Okay, after two seconds, it will be at that point. That will be the, the position vector after two seconds. After three seconds, it will be up there and so on. So that's what this tells us. So if we think about A, the position vector of A will be given by its initial position, which is 2 minus 10, plus the velocity it's going at times the time. So you can say time multiplied by minus 1, 6. That will tell you the position of A at any time t. Okay, this takes you to its position when time is zero, and then when you put t equals one, that will be the position vector re with respect to the origin, it's from O to the point where it is when t is two, and three, and four, whatever time you want, that will tell you where it is at that time. And the, similarly for b, the position vector of b at any time t will be given by its, its initial position vector, which is minus 26, four plus time multiplied by its velocity which is 3 4 so that's 
A and B, their position vectors now. What we can say is they will collide if there is there is a time T for which RA and RB are equal, then they collide. Okay, so if I can find one time for which they both uh, vectors will be at the same place, that means they will collide. Okay, so um, let's just equate R, A, and A, um, R, B. So I've got 2 minus 10 plus T times negative 1, 6. I'm going to equate it to negative 26, 4 plus T times 3, 4. Okay, now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make one equation for the I component, which is 2 minus T equals negative 26 plus 3T. And I'm going to make another equation for the J component, which is negative 10 plus 6T equals 4 plus 4T. 4 plus 4T. Now, I'm going to solve both of these for T and see if we get the same value. So I'm going to here add 26 to both sides. That's 28 equals 4t. Divide by 4, that means t equals 7. That's 7 seconds, is it seconds? Meters per second? Yeah, meters per second. So that's 7 seconds. And I'm also going to do the same for this. I'll have, um, this will be 2t equals 4 plus 10, which is 14. So t equals 7 seconds. So we can see that they're both the same. Okay, so at t equals 7 seconds, they collide. Okay, so we've shown that for this, if the two times came out as different, then they won't collide. Okay, but because they came out the same, that means they'll both be at the same place at the same time when t equals second, 7 seconds. Okay, and to find the position vector of p, which is, we can say O to p, we can substitute t equals 7 into either one of these two position vectors. When I put t equals 7 into here, it will tell me where A is at 7 seconds. If I put t equals 7 in, into here, it will tell me where B is when t equals 7 seconds. So it doesn't matter which one I put them in, I should get the same answer. And that's one way for you to check in case you've made a, a mistake somewhere, because if they don't give you the same answer, you've made a mistake. All right, so let's see. Let's see. Let's put them in A. So you have um, 2 minus 10 plus 7 times minus 1, 6. That gives you 2 minus 7, which is negative 5, and minus 10 plus 42, so 42 minus 10, 32. Okay, so therefore we can say the vector from O to P, always put it back in its initial form like they gave you in I and J notation. So its position vector is going to be minus 5I plus 32J meters. And we can make a check to see if we get the same answer. If I put instead... In this equation, Rb uh, as 7, I'll have minus 26 plus 7 times 3 is 21, which is negative 5. And I'll have 4 plus 7 times 4, which is 28, which is 32. So minus 5, 32. You see I get exactly the same thing. So we know we can be rest assured that we've done the right thing. And there's the answer, the position vector of P. Okay, and we've also proved here that they collide because we ended up with the same time. They're at the same place okay so there's the answer to part c and now we're going to move on to part d it says given instead that b has a speed of eight meters per second and moves in the direction of the vector 3i plus 4j find the distance of b from p when t equals seven seconds so we know that the position vector of p is equal to negative 5 32 okay, that's where um the the well, B was after 7 seconds, um, A and B both actually, but here they told us no, B is going at a new speed of 8 meters per second, and it's moving in this direction, so we got to find the distance of B from P when T equals 7 seconds. Okay, so basically we have a new situation for B. So it's, again, for B, the new situation, so I'll put B2. We have its initial position is the same course it started from that place so the initial position is minus 26i plus 4j 
minus 26i plus 4j, so I'll just put it as a column vector as I prefer, minus 26, 4. That's its initial position. Now, we want to find the velocity of B2. Now, the velocity of B2 is not 3, 4 anymore. Okay, this is this is its direction. Okay, it now has a magnitude of 8 meters per second. This, this initial uh, velocity doesn't have um, a um, magnitude of 8. It has a magnitude of... 5 because if we do find the magnitude of this vector it's 3 squared plus 4 squared square rooted which is going to be 3 4 5 triangle it's 5 the one we want has a magnitude of 8 so if i take my initial velocity vector which is 3 4 and i find one fifth of it that will be a vector of magnitude 1 unit one fifth of 3 4 will be you know, a magnitude of one unit, because, you know, this has a magnitude of five, multiply by one fifth, has a magnitude of, of one. And if I multiply that by eight, so I have eight over five times three, four, this vector here has a magnitude of eight, because one fifth, three, four, has a magnitude of one, multiplied by eight, that has a magnitude of eight. So eight over five times three, four, has a magnitude of 8, and it's in the direction, same direction as 3, 4. Okay, it's in the same direction as this, but it has a magnitude of 8. So now, I can find the new position of B, okay, after 7 seconds. So it's going to be minus 26, 4, plus 7 times 8 over 5, 3, 4. That will be the new position of the boat to be after seven seconds when it's now going at this new speed okay so let's calculate what that is do we have 56 over 5 what's 56 divided by 5 it's 11 point something uh, sorry divided by 5 not 4 okay so that's gonna be 11.2 i think yeah that's 11.2 um so we have basically um minus 26 plus 11.2 times 3 and we have 4 uh, plus 11.2 times 4 and that will give you the position vector of b after seven seconds so let's just do these calculations negative 26 whoops negative 26 plus 11.2 times 3 that gives you 38 over 5, which is 7.6. And we have um, 11.2 times, oops, times 4. And here should be a 4 as well. And 4 plus 11.2 times 4. That gives you 48.8. Okay, so that's the position vector of this when time equals 7 seconds. Okay, so that's the position vector when time equals 7 seconds of the boat. Okay, so now they told us to find the distance of B from P. So it's just say this is the origin O. Just say we know that B is, uh, P is minus 532. So I'll just try to be a bit more realistic. Minus 532, say it's up here somewhere. Supposing this is where B is. Okay, so B is up here. Okay, so that's O and that's B. And the new position of, sorry, that's P. That's P, minus 532, that's P. That's the position of uh, the boat. That's the position of where they would have collided if they were bo both moving at the initial speed. That's where they would have collided. All right, now B is now at 7.6 and 48.8. So it's some, somewhere up here. That's where the boat is after this change in the, in the speed. So it's going to be somewhere up here. Okay, so this is a new position of B somewhere. So I'm going to call that B2, right? So we know that this vector here is negative 5, 32. So this is just a rough sketch. And this vector here is 7.6, 48.8. We want to find the distance between them. So what we're trying to find here is this. That's what we're trying to find, this distance between them. Okay, so if I find the vector from B2 to P and then find its magnitude, I have then found the distance between 
distance to the boat and where it, you know, P and B2, where the boat is now after this change and where it would have been after seven seconds before. All right, so I need to find this vector. So I can see that if I find the vector from here to here, it's like going from B2 to O and then from O to P. So it's like O to P minus, so I can say B2 to P is like going, if you, see, if you think about it, minus OB2 plus OP. So it's like doing OP minus OB2. Okay, so this is OP, which is minus 532. Take away from that 7.6 and 48.8. And we want to find the magnitude of all of this. Okay, that's what we need. That will be the distance. So if I calculate this, so this is minus 12.6, I think, minus 12.6. And this is 32, 32 minus 48.8. That gives you minus 85, minus 16.8, minus 16.8. Uh, I got to find the magnitude of that, which equals the square root of 12.6 squared. I don't worry about the, the minus sign because it's going to be squared plus 16.8 squared. And let's see what that leads us to. So we have 12.6 squared plus 16.8 squared. And that gives you 441. And the square root of 441 is 21. Okay, so that's the square root of 441, which is equal to 21. So we can say that 21 meters is the answer. Okay, so we can say B2 to P, its magnitude is equal to 21 meters okay so there's the answer to part d the distance of b from p okay the distance is the magnitude of its displacement and its displacement is given by this vector here and there we have answered question number six part d other questions from this paper if i get around to or i get requested to answer questions from this paper um i will put them in a playlist that would appear up here somewhere um, I'll make the playlist and this will be the only question in it until somebody asks me another question from me if they do um, underneath that you will have a playlist that takes you to all the questions I've done about vectors from M1 mechanics 1 you can subscribe to my channel by clicking at this link top of the page you can find a more maybe up-to-date um, recent M1 paper link and also in the description box you will find links to other papers and units that I've done from LXL maths um, international A level and also from IGCSE, um, mainly the Cambridge board. Thank you for watching and see you soon.